Today you're going to learn how to get an authentic Gary Rossington tone. Gary Rossington, one of the founding members of Leonard Skinner, he played most of their guitar solos known for a very melodic and soulful style on songs like Tuesday's Gone, You Got Gimme Three Steps, Call Me the Breeze, and just so many others. I couldn't possibly list them all right now. But he's got that silky smooth bending. <laughs> It's so addicting to play. It's a great guitar tone to have, just in general. If you're thinking about getting a good Gary tone from the start, begin with the instrument itself. So you need a Les Paul type of guitar, something with a lot of sustain and resonance. PF style humbuckers are amazing. And this really opens up your sound. It gives a certain airiness to the tone. When I think about some bends, I mean, I'm getting more resonance than I should be at an amp at low volume with this guitar and these style humbuckers. I don't have a lot of reverb on my amp set here, and that's just the airiness, the natural airiness it's picking up off of the humbucker. So what I recommend doing is if you got an Epiphone Les Paul or a Gibson Les Paul Standard, outfit them with some PAF style humbuckers. There's plenty of aftermarket pickups. I've already purchased a couple sets of the Seymour Duncan Seth Lovers and I've put them on my other guitars. I love the tone of this so much and I wanted to see what they do. I got a video coming up with that soon. It makes those guitars sound eons better, much closer to this. So a small investment can really make your guitar sound like a million bucks. So start there, get some PF style humbuckers, outfit them in your guitar. With a resonant guitar, it's going to sound amazing. Next thing we're gonna look at is Gary Rosington amp settings. So where do you set your amp to get the right sound? This is going to have a huge impact on your tone. So let's look at EQ first, and then we're gonna talk about some drive and gain options. EQ wise, you need it to be a very mid-range sound. So set the mids to 10. Then we're gonna set the bass to six. And Gary Rossington described it as his tone was very ballsy in the bass. He liked the PV amps because they had that, that kick in the low range and mid range to help carry his guitar forward. The Marshalls didn't really have that and the PV Mace was something that he really enjoyed in that sound was it had the low end as well as the high end, there's a fuller range. So we need to simulate some of that EQ by getting our mid set to 10, bass set to six, trebles around seven. Now, if you have a presence knob on your amp, fiddle around with it till you find something you like. That one's very to taste. I've got my presence knob at 12 o'clock with this guitar. It's gonna depend on the guitar, the pickups, there's so many factors there that influence your EQ, but those settings are a good starting point. When we look at where do you set the gain, this is probably one of the biggest decisions you'll make. You don't want too much gain. You don't wanna sound like a metal player out there. It drives me nuts when I see guys playing that smell. And they got all this gain. What am I, like Van Halen, Leonard Skinner? No. This Boss Katana does a great job of getting Gary's tone. I've got it set on the crunch channel. So the crunch channel allows you to get a good classic rock tone. On the crunch channel, some channels have volume and drive settings just for that channel. I've maxed out the volume on the channel. The master volume on the amp is something I'll control independently. So the volume here, maxing it out here, does not max out the amp. It does not, it can change amp volume, but the master has the biggest effect on your amp's volume. So my channel volume is set all the way up. That's because it fattens the sound. Just like you would see on a tube amp, with a tube amp, you try and turn up the channel volume as much as you can to really warm up those tubes and get some warmth in, into your tone. It's not so brittle and crackly. And then from there, we, we adjust the gain. And this is where it's going to vary depending on your amp type. My gain is set to around 12 o'clock on a crunch channel. So the gain really isn't that high. <laughs> Now 
In fact, when I roll back the volume, you can hear how much it cleans up. So this would be rolling back to about six. You need to have that type of gain because when you roll back, you'll be playing rhythm. So we'll be playing. So you need to be able to go switch back into rhythm pretty quickly and going back to the lead on full volume. So we're setting our guitar volume to 10 and getting our lead tone here. And then we're rolling back the volume for our rhythm channel. If I was on a high gain metal channel, I couldn't do it. Here's an example. That's the same setting here, six volume. And that's just, that's not going to cut it for Skinnered Rhythm, that's way too distorted. So, use that crunch style channel, set your gain to taste, you don't want it to sound like a metal song. We're going for more a clean, punchier sound. And that's going to come from a lower gain setting. So don't think about going metal on me. And you know who you are out there, if you're playing metal Skinnered, it just doesn't fit. Next thing we'll look at with Gary's sound. There's a couple of pieces of equipment you could throw in there. One was a phaser pedal. Now I'm lucky to have a phaser built into the Katana. So if you've got the Katana, they have an MXR90 phase pedal. It's a Dunlop phase pedal, the orange one. That's the one he used in Live at the Fox. And I can set my effects here. <laughs> He uses a lot on Call Me The Breeze. Now, I've obviously got a little saturated with the sound, but you go on to the, your PC when you hook this up and get that phaser tuned just right. So I wouldn't have it that saturated, but you can you can hear that that phaser is there. Plays that on Gimme Three Steps, I mean uh, Call Me The Breeze, and then also Tuesday's Gone and Freebird. He even used a little phaser on the Freebird sound. Something else he used in the studio, Tuesday's Gone, he had a Univibe phaser pedal. So that was combining like a Univibe and a phaser. He gave it that deeper sound. That's how you get that unique tone on Tuesday's Gone in the studio. We're not really, Focusing too much on getting that sound because they don't really make those pedals anymore. You have to go dig that out of the internet somewhere. Go to like back alley of a convenience store and you'll find one. But uh, looking at basic Gary sound without the pedals, you just have um, lower gain. Pedal wise, you need a phaser pedal and that'll cover it. That's what I love about these vintage guitar players. They don't have pedal boards. They don't need 70 pedals. You see these guys walking around with all these pedal boards. The tone is in the hands. You can't, you could buy, sure, you can buy a guitar tone. Developing your hands will go f so much further. Because when you take the pedals out and you're playing alone and you just have an amp here, you might not recognize yourself taking the pedals away. Build the sound here with your hands before you insert the pedals. You know, that's just a little suggestion. Now looking at Gary's play style, what do we got? A couple of things to pay attention to. Gary loved using double stops. So that's hybrid picking double stops. When you hybrid pick with the middle finger and the third finger, the ring finger. So playing double stops. A lot 
of times he's caught playing those types of double stops. That's how you get that, that sound like. I'll see people use a pick with that. It doesn't sound right. Watch video of Gary live. You'll see they've got shots of his right hand on the strings and you can see see him using the hybrid picking technique. He does it in a lot of songs, you know, Saturday Night Special. He does it in a bunch of other songs, you know, Saturday Night Special is a good example. So that's a big part of getting Gary's sound, hybrid picking. Next thing we pinch harmonics. Think about a song like Give Me Back My Bullets. Pinch harmonics, you gotta hold the pick closer to the string. So there's not much space between my finger and this pick. I don't know if you can see that there. There's just a sliver of it hanging out. You're trying to pinch the string against your thumb. So as I pick, with the pick first, then the string is hitting my thumb. It's easier to do that when you have less room between the pick and your hand. If you've got too much room, you have to really find a way to dig your thumb into it. It's not a comfortable angle of attack though, if I've got that much pick I'm working with. So I'll shorten up the amount of pick I'm working with and if you look at the picks Gary was using, they were Mel Bay bullseye picks. So it was a really floppy pick. And the way he held it was not the way we traditionally hold picks. He didn't like the floppy end. It was a lighter, a lighter uh, type of pick, lighter thickness. So he turned it around to the side that you hold with the grip. He was using the grip end and he had that little sliver sticking out. <laughs> That's how you can get a lot of his pinch harmonic sounds. Think about that smell. He's got that solo. pinch harmonics at the end. The only way I can really hit those is if I have almost zero space between the pick and my thumb. So that will help you get. But if I don't, if I have tons of space and I've got all, more pick to work with, I have to work harder to get the pinch harmonic. It almost happens naturally though if, I'm, if I've got no space there. So getting that pinch harmonic sound, really important how you hold the pick with Gary's tone. Another thing to learn about Gary's play style is his bends. He likes to do a lot of bends with sustain. So learning how to hold your bends is especially helpful and sometimes I'll do over bends. So looking at those over bends, you're bending, sliding up and bending in one note. Another thing he likes to do is higher bends up here. He's a big fan of that type of bend. The 13th fret B string and then bending the 15th fret. Another thing is So 
when you get these types of tones, bending. Another thing you like to do is this. You're bending up the G string and then picking the B and E strings. There's so many other techniques that he does, but those are really common ones that you'll see him use. I, I can think of another song where... I think about that uh, solo in Coming Home. that solo coming home he does at the end there's almost all of his techniques are in there another one I almost forgot was this one right here he loves to do these slide-ins yeah it sounds so smooth And you saw me throw in another technique right there with the power chord. That's hybrid picking the A and G string, the two notes in the chord here. Isn't that, isn't that cool? Another thing that's really important when getting a good Gary tone is your hands. Train your hands to work like Gary's. Gary's got this sliding going on. So I think about playing Gary's style on the neck. I don't push down too hard on the neck. I actually play a little lighter. I let the guitar do the work. If you watch Gary play, he looks very lazy or just so calm, very relaxed. Because I've noticed with these 59 Les Paul necks, they're fatter than the slim taper necks that I'm so used to playing. And when I switched to this guitar, the biggest adjustment was the neck itself. But my slim, the slim taper necks, I find that I have to push down a little bit harder to get a good sound out of it. But with the neck fatter here, the guitar being a fatter neck, it pushes down harder for you on the strings. And so you don't need to push down too hard. Just let, let it play you. Let the, let the guitar do the work. I find that effortless playing is a lot easier on your hands. A fatter neck will help you in that regard. So uh, a little bit lighter grip pressure on the neck, if you will, a little bit lighter pressure with your fingers on the neck. If you're on a slim taper neck though, as most Les Pauls are nowadays, you get that slim taper neck, then think about applying a little bit more pressure. Watch Gary play. You'll see how his hands work on the neck, how his hands attack the strings. So another thing that he does when he attacks the strings, it's right hand technique is often very smooth. He's not hitting it so hard in this way. He's not attacking it like Alan Collins is more of an attacker. Gary's more of a, let's just lay back. You actually see him sometimes, he'll play a solo and he'll, lay, he'll, he'll end up hitting the note.
shows you how much effort he's really putting into it. He's not working too hard. He's laying back. So think about laying back as you play. Those bends. Almost like you want to be behind the beat, but you're not. You're not going to be out of time, but just trying to be slower about it. thing I like to think about is Gary Rosenton on the clean channel the song like Simple Man. You hear that little shimmering chime on the guitar. That's coming from when I roll back the volume. And in this case, my volumes were set to about five or six. But if I want to get an even better tone for Simple Man, I'll roll it back to three. And that's where the cleans really pop. So, a good question to ask yourself is your tone clean enough? When you roll back to three, it should be clean with a little bit of that shimmer. That tells you if you're on the right track. But then when you get to 10, it's lead. So I'm rolling it right back to three, back to clean. With Skinner, it's important to build transition from rhythm to lead without using pedals, without changing anything on your amp. It's all going to come from the guitar right here. So an example of Simple Man, I'll be playing. right back into that volume level, level three. I went from three to 10 for the lead, back to three. And that's a, a really important skill to have when trying to do anything Skinner, even though you're playing Alan Collins, Ed King, you got Gary, Steve, anybody. Just being able to switch from rhythm to lead with the volume knob. And it is a nice skill to have. So build that skill up and you'll see that your playing improves. You'll be able to sound a lot crisper in the mix and not always be at that one volume. So today I see a lot of guitar players, they seem to stay at 10 volume all the time and it seems to be a lost art of using the volume knob. You can change your tone so many different ways. Last thing I'll leave you with, with Gary's tone, if you don't wanna go out and get a set of PF humbuckers, which I understand, you know, that is a nice investment for your guitar, though you can really get a huge return on this. $250 for these, will make your $300 guitar sound like a million bucks. I put them on my $300 guitar over here, and it sounds like a Les Paul. Sounds the way it should be. Now, if you don't wanna go out and change your guitar, the last thing I recommend doing on your amp is turn up the reverb halfway. Get a nice roomy reverb and just fiddle around with it. It'll give you a little bit more resonance and sustain the sound more open because the last thing you want with Gary's tone is to sound closed off. So we need to take advantage of some air in the room, get your pickups to have a little bit more of that airy sound like the PAFs. Just give it a subtle reverb or turn it up a little bit more to get that, that openness. But allow the humbuckers to do the work. If you got PAFs, allow them to do the job or PF style humbuckers but if not, add some reverb to it and it's gonna sound really good. Hope you enjoyed this video and if it helped you sound a lot more like Gary, get a better Gary tone, let me know in the comments below and I'll see you in a future episode.